Hello everyone and now welcome. Welcome to a game between Sock versus Foggy. This game taking place here on Tide Hunters. Sock has spawned as the red human player on the bottom right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, over here on the top left, we have Foggy spawning as the blue night elf. Night elf versus human in a 1v1 matchup. And hopefully this game does not disappoint as I'm expecting to see. Well, if everything goes according to the meta, Ancient of War is being built right here. We are going to be seeing a Keeper of the Grove being trained up, making its way on out, going up against most likely an Archmage and some Footmen. Some early action on Tide Hunters has people has players generally generally playing close to their base early on. Once they can get access to level two, the pressure is on as Foggy may try and get some entangles on some unsuspecting Footmen to gain a little bit of a lead. How will all of this unravel and play out? That is the question as well. Guest number one, Archmage going to be trained up. Guest number two, is it going to be a Keeper of the Grove? No real surprises at all. Now, what are the follow-up plays going to be? Are these players going to be trying to go for fast expansions or expansions in general? Or are they going to be trying to play that one base style of play? I've been seeing a lot more players recently doing one base play as a human player when normally you would try to go for two bases. Um, with that said, is um, it, it also does depend a lot on the matchup and the amount of pressure that the Keeper of the Grove from Foggy can place down on his opponent. Once the Keeper of the Grove gets to level 3, we've often been seeing human players, or excuse me, Night Elf players going for that Entangle at level 2 to really shut down those footmen until, well, there's a transition into riflemen and or spellbreakers. Coming back around Keeper of the Grove using those tree ends, but Foggy getting an, an unlucky ensnare on one of those units will not be able to join in on the fight. Meanwhile, Archmage with some militia clearing out some of these early creep camps here. I don't know if that one particular creep off over there, if it no longer does that spin attack, but it doesn't feel as though that um, that anchor attack is really dealing as much damage as it used to do in the past. Archmage, off to the north, you're going to go ahead and clear on up, clear out of this relatively easy creep camp, and then, well, based on the timing, we'll see if we are looking for expansions or anything else of that nature. For all of you guys who are joining in and have not already done so, if you've liked what you heard and still want more Warcraft reaction, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button on YouTube. It costs you nothing except having an additional video that you may want to watch. For all of you guys out there who have continued to support me on Patreon, um, or if you just watch these videos and actually um, actually watch the ads, or I, I think even skipping the ads um, does a little bit of help for me, I'll be able to produce this hopefully what you uh, hopefully what you think to be high level content for, well, years and years to come. Coming back through, Archmage going to pick up a Tome of Intelligence plus two. That will definitely help with the damage and also top out a little bit more mana as well as the Keeper, the Grove, shows up to the party to do exactly what he wants, which is try and delay this expansion as much as possible. Tree Ants are here, a bunch of militia. Sock currently sitting on six peasants should be training up more as well. Otherwise, he may be low on lumber in a little bit as the Keeper of the Grove may be doubling back around. All right, low hit point peasant trying to head back away. Going to end up seeing more tree ants show up to the party. There goes one. Well, there goes one peasant right there as the Keeper of the Grove now looking to back away. Great use of that of those tree ants to clear out some trees and put some pr pressure. The forest has come alive and well doesn't like human expansions coming back around we're looking at tree and sound continuing to put this pressure here no arcane tower and foggy is doing the exact strategy that i expected trying to put a pressure onto an expansion that sock is trying to establish from here he should have a very fast access to tier two and then could either go for a panda breath of fire to try and continue that pressure against all of these, well, tier one units, or could try and go for a demon hunter, mana burn, and, and try to limit options there, or, well, come up with a completely new strategy as, well, Foggy is the professional player. Sock, on the other hand, he may be responding to what his opponent does. If we see a demon hunter, we could see a blood mage counter. 
um, we may see a Blood Mage counter anyways, as we should be looking at a Dryad, another unit here. Oh, item trying to get picked up. What is going to get picked up right there? Picking up a second Mantle of Intelligence, and suddenly Sock has plus 16 damage between two Mantles of Intelligence and two Claws of Attack plus 5. That damage adds up very quickly. You can see that sudden damage taking almost a chunk of 40 plus damage away from that Keeper of the Grove per attack and foggy perhaps was not expecting that at all off to the north foggy is looking to set up an expansion of his own he's gonna have a little bit of difficulty as we are already seeing wisp coming over to try and detonate and cause a bit of problems tree of life absorbing 1300 hit points archer is now trying to retreat back away from that archmage as the archmage with that plus 16 damage could rack that up very quickly tree of life already down to 800 some odd hit points and going to be dropping quickly as we see another detonation come across keeper of the grove does have level two entangle going to be able to shut down these footmen slowly but surely and then perhaps add in more damage as the archmage really working on that plus 16 damage and remember there was also tomes of intelligence um, that was picked up by that archmage so that archmage normal and um, has at least plus 18 damage more than he normally would at this point and stage in the game socks water elemental coming across here there goes another entangle once more however you're looking at big drop-offs in terms of hit points on foggy's keeper of the grove as the nagasi which now suddenly shows up putting pressure on that archmage archmage going to be forced to back up here water elemental still getting well and absolutely entangled and shut down as the tree of life looks to entangle that gold mine sock having a bit of a gold advantage there a thousand more gold has been mined archmage now using that scroll of town portal will be retreating back to the expansion and waiting for that arcane vault to come online here tech to tier three two-thirds of the way done a second barracks actually being added by sock this is not what i was expecting a second barracks so we, we we will be going for dual wax riflemen that is not a strategy i was expecting from sock whatsoever it is important though to get that range upgrade and continue to train up more units sock is now while well, trying to floor the game here and try and be able to put down pressure going up against this naga sea witch Sock's options for tier 2 hero. Is he going to get a second hero? Most definitely. But what is that choice going to be? Is he going to be picking up a tavern hero? Or perhaps trying to train up a mountain king to start sniping down some of those archers. Footman going to engage here. But once more, finds the keeper of the grove. There goes another entangled Nagasi, which getting in a little bit of damage. But the creeps off onto the north, still putting in a lot of pressure. Keeper of the grove trying to fight its way through Archmage with that plus 16 damage. Really starting to add, or really just putting pressure here onto all of these units as the footman now trying to dive on into a Foggy's base here. Archmage adding in that damage, that Naga Sea Witch, two or three more shots, but Archmage in trouble. Archmage gets shut down. The Entangle without a scroll of Town Portal, Archmage falls at level three. Did, well, did Sock overextend? It definitely looks like he overextended right there, Archmage. Well, um, are we going to be looking at a resurrection at the tavern as we are getting up a Mountain King trained up back at home? And um, Sock does have the gold. And as he does have the expansion, but you don't want to be resurrecting from the tavern unless you can help it. Archmage now re retreating back here. We are going into dual racks. Only one rifleman being trained up here. Do we already have the long range uh, finished upgrading? Yes, we do. As additional farms will need to be added as we are going into Arcane Sanctums as well. Sock sitting on 22 workers compared to Foggy's 16. Um, expansions are up for both sides. Are we looking at a Goblin Shredder, perhaps? Yeah, Goblin Shredder making up um, a lot of that work right there as Foggy. Um, should not have any lumber issues either. Sox still with a slightly larger army as we're going to be going into an engagement here. A little bit of damage. Well, a little crab lobster guy getting taken down as the Keeper of the Grove does not have enough mana. Looking to perhaps get another entangle off onto more units. Level 4 onto that Keeper of the Grove. Level 2 on the Naga Sea Witch. Units are trying to retreat back as the Naga Sea Witch gets stunned. This could be bad news indeed as the Archmage is just racking up that damage. One more Stormbolt would have been enough, but it looks as though it will be able to get away a defensive entangle to ensure that the mountain king is unable to finish off the target all right it's taken down mountain king with the boots of speed was able to close in on that distance rather quickly another giant sea turtle taken out 
Priest now getting added in. So instead of dual Arcane Sanctums with a single Barracks, it is dual Racks with a single Arcane Sanctum. And we are not seeing any training on um, any Sorceresses either, only Priest at this point. Mountain King makes its way off to the north. Sock sitting at level 3, level 1 on that Archmage Mountain King combination. Meanwhile, Foggy with a slight hero level advantage, almost level 3 on his second hero as well. As we're looking at, well, the Nagasi was trying to make its way back across here. If you're spending too much time walking to where you need to go, you are giving precious moments and precious seconds to your opponent to try and get in that damage as the Archmage is going to try and engage here, adding in more damage onto that Keeper of the Globe. Peasants are all here absorbing a little bit of damage. They're going to get taken out. Archmage may try and focus down some of these units. Mountain King finishes off a Dryad. Here comes some Scout Towers as we, the Priest are relatively low on hit points. Goblin Shredder even joining in on the battle, and that's going to get focused down very quick. Staff of Preservation, however, causes a little bit of frustration right there. Mountain King, Stormbolt, um, Potion of Invulnerability also being used there as the Archmage, or the, excuse me, the Nagas, he was trying to back up with the Ring of Regeneration. Still trying to regenerate as we see Fork Lightning come down and across. Level 2 Fork Lightning adding in more damage. Keeper of the Grove has a scroll of healing. Is it going to try and absorb there? All of these Keeper of the Grove illusions causing quite a bit of problems. Just absorbing damage. As we're looking at the Keeper of the Grove, did he use a little bit of a heal? Yes, he did. He used that scroll of healing. And now we see another Fork Lightning coming back across here. Sock could be losing one Priest. No, a Priest able to get away at two hit points as the units are still trying to retreat back. Mountain King now getting all of that focused fire attention as the Scout Tower could end up getting taken down. Nagasi, which takes another Storm Bolt. Mountain King sits at level two. Uh, tower now getting taken down here. Keeper of the Grove trying to finish off more things. Fork Lightning only going after the Peasants and the Rifleman not going after that low hit point Priest who was in the back. And that priest is doing quite a bit of work, keeping himself and all of those remaining units alive. All right. We're looking still at a little bit of hit and run tactics. Fork Lightning taking down two, foot, two footmen right there. A third footman gets taken down as well as still more damage coming back across. Dry getting taken down. 56 supply compared to 44. Sock with the supply advantage. But that is just turning into more and more experience for Foggy as Foggy is nearing level 5 and level 4 on his two heroes. Mountain King trying to make its way back over. We are seeing an Arcane Vault trying to add in a little bit of home field advantage. Tree of Life just watching all of this battle unfolding right before his eyes, but unable to get up and do anything about it as he's still mining gold. Mountain King continuing to fight back once more, getting after those Dryads one at a time as a Scout Tower Guard Tower upgrade nearly completed. Naga Siewich is now at 4. Keeper of the Grove is sitting at level 5, pushing, but the fortification of Sock has been completed as the Mountain King also gets to level 3. 39 supply compared to 49. Archmage sitting at level 4. That additional plus 16 damage still racking up quite a bit as well as we're looking at the, well, perhaps Dryads still trying to push their way through. Double guard towers here. No masonry upgrades. Peasants should just pretty much be on auto repair at this point as the Tree of Life is under duress. Foggy sitting on over 1,400 gold. Treants now joining in on the battle here. It is level 3 Treants. Are we going to see some dispels? Priest could easily dispel some of that, trying to separate it a little bit more as we're looking at the Priest. Well, the Priest trying to get in the position here. Are we going to see any repairs? Down to 300 some odd hit points as the Tree of Life slowly but surely getting taken down. There goes a quick, quick dispel as the Priest are going to finish off Foggy and Sock. Eve and now trying to close up and retreat back, knowing that the longer the game goes, the better it will be for him. He has the economic advantage. He is mining a bit more gold a second, even though he is currently lower in terms of the bank. Keeper of the Grove um, should not really be here. Naga Siewich wants to get to level 5. Keeper of the Grove should be backing away as the Naga Siewich hopes to perhaps pick up some useful, useful consumable items. Meanwhile, Mountain King, sitting at level 3, has a potion of invulnerability. And Sock, well, has a lot of work to do to try and close out this game. Winning a game, um, even though you have an advantage, is just one of those difficult things to try and do, as you often end up making mistakes if you are simply not careful enough. Keeper of the Grove absorbing quite a bit of damage here. Now going after those Treants. Treants are now going after, or, well, Keeper of the Grove absorbing that damage actually fairly well as Guard Tower number one will get taken out. And this is also a hidden way for the Keeper of the Grove to still gain experience. And even though it's buying time for Sock to try and gain more experience off to the north. 
Sox sitting at 64 supply. Foggy finally going into low upkeep, sitting at 56 supply. <coughs> he still has 600 gold in the bank. Are we going to be looking at Tree of... Um, no, only Tree of Ages. Not even going for Tree of Eternity. Only going for Bears. And now Foggy is actually setting up an expansion of his own. Now, there's going to be a window of opportunity for Sock to close out this game. As Foggy is investing in resources to try and re-establish up this base here and perhaps be okay if the game goes long, Sock has a perfect timing where this expansion will not have paid for itself at all. Foggy needs to spend the gold on the Tree of Life, get those additional wisps ready to mine at that gold mine. And if the attack comes as it is now, well, things could go sideways. Mountain King is at four, Archmage is at five. 73 supply army, um, 73 supply compared to 62 as Foggy, actually not that far behind in terms of um, total army size, 55 compared to 52. Um, but then again, I believe that it accounts for a Goblin Shredder, which may not be part of the fight here. All right, all it takes is a little bit of a misstep here, and this might be the misstep. Keeper of the Grove is going to try and find that Archmage in Tangle straight up onto the Mortar Team. Mortar Team going to get uh, suffer quite a bit of damage. It's going to get taken down. Dryads, however, could end up falling to those mo um, Mortar Teams very quickly. Keeper of the Grove needs to get another Entangle off to try and make sure that splash damage doesn't add up too quickly. There goes another Mortar Team. Archmage says, you know what? I need to get out of here. Militia now making their way over to here as a third Mortar Team escapes in time. Mortar team down to two hit points after all of that poison, able to escape back Mountain King with double potions of invulnerability could give one to that Archmage. And we're still only, we are still sitting at Castle now with a Paladin as that third and final human hero. 74 supply compared to 62 foggy. Well, needs to get that expansion up. Hasn't done so yet. There's Wisp waiting to go into a gold mine and the entanglement has uh, the entangle has still yet to be started that's going to be a little bit of a problem oh perhaps foggy's a uh, tree of life was just one step too far away finally entangling that gold mine but every second that there was um, for that transition is another seven gold lost um, as foggy is in low upkeep 77 supply compared to 84 at this point, Sock should be looking to see if Foggy has that expansion up and operational. Army sizes are pretty much the same as the Mountain King looks to get to level 5. Sock has nearly cleared up um, any experience advantage that Foggy has and is going to be pr pressing down here in just a moment. We are also looking at a Paladin as the third hero, so burst healing is going to be a problem. Foggy, however, has greatly superior upgrades with 2-2 two, two going up against a 1-0 upgrades only for the riflemen and those mortar teams units are looking to back away here dryads are 2-2 two, two upgraded mortar teams however can make quick quick work of all of those units if he's not careful as the entangle or as the um, wisp are in now entangling that gold mine or finish entangling all right treant's going to try and engage here however there is one control magic more damage getting added in back and forth fork lightning coming across many of those frontline workers as they are relatively low on hit points 80 supply compared to 59 and things are just looking bad for foggy foggy may not be able to bounce back into this as priests are slowly but surely getting taken down dryads really aren't going to be adding very much to the battle here foggy never transitioned into bears so socks sorceresses are not going to be doing much However, are there enough mortar teams to deal with all of these Dryads on the battlefield? It looks as though that's going to be the case as there's still four Dryads here. Fork Lightning coming back across. More Dryads getting splatted as we're now looking at 46 supply compared to 72. Mortar team finally down, but I believe the damage was done as the Keeper of the Grove falls as well. Foggy's loss of the expansion followed by... Um, even though he had superior hero levels, is starting to take a toll as Foggy does throw in the towel. Sock coming away with the victory there, taking that resource advantage and translating it into um, a level advantage at the end. If you look at the uh, amount of experience gained, it was actually fairly close between the two. Foggy actually ahead for quite some time until Sock was able to do a little bit more creeping, get up to level 5 on both of his heroes, and then added in that Paladin in that last fight. The larger army for Sock in the end let him take down more units at a faster rate than his opponent, and then ultimately take the experience lead away.
I hope you guys enjoyed this cast. If you're looking for more Warcraft 3, well, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.